Welcome back to Retro Axis. In this series, we'll be talking about operating systems and why they're important and how you make the best selection. If you go to DistroWatch, you'll notice that there's just a, a ton of choices when it comes to Linux or BSD or alternative operating systems. So what I'm gonna do is show you a bit more about how to properly select an operating system for the right use case. If you're interested in building a retro gaming computer, then maybe there are certain distributions that are more optimized for that. Or if you're gonna use a Raspberry Pi, that's gonna be a lot different than what's available for an Intel or AMD based computer. So in this episode, we're gonna talk a bit more about some of the prerequisites and things you should think about. And further on in the series, we'll actually do some installations and help you make an informed decision. Let's get started. So when you're looking for an alternative operating system, one of the first places you can start is distrowatch.com. And distrowatch is a, a website that provides a lot of information about Linux and BSD systems in particular. Uh, and the purpose of it is to sort of have news about latest releases. Uh, distributions will oftentimes put out a, a, a notification. This is a great way to sort of syndicate all these into one place. Another thing that's interesting is you can actually select from an exhaustive drop-down list, all the you know currently active uh, operating systems that are available on DistroWatch. You can also search for historical ones that are no longer in development. It's kind of funny. I had written one back in um, 2001. I had started working when AMD first came out with the Hammer architecture, which is now AMD 64. Uh, myself and several others had begun to work on the very first, one of the very first um, x64 only distributions. Uh, didn't last long, ended up, uh, you know, shutting down the project, just what, it took up way too much time. Uh, but what's fun about this is just being able to go back and look at that historically. So if you're ever interested, there's a lot of really cool historic uh, Linux distributions that no longer exist. Um, Corel, the people who make WordPerfect and, um, and Corel Paint, uh, they actually had made a Linux distribution a long time ago, and it was actually for its day, it was a really cool uh, distro, but it no longer exists. But historically, you can go back here and see a lot of those really cool old distributions. So diving into an individual distro, what you can learn a lot here is about the distribution itself. It's very important to know who's writing your distribution, who is it backed? Is it, is it a corporate sponsor? Is it a community of developers? How large is that community? What's the longevity of this? Why was this distribution created in the first place? What's its goal? What's its purpose? Um, another thing to consider, uh, you know, about the distribution itself too, is what is it based on? Was it based on Debian? Is it based on even Ubuntu? Even though Debian and Ubuntu are similar, there are some differences. Uh, is it based on Arch Linux or Red Hat or, or what have you? Or is it written from scratch? Uh, some of the more distributions uh, that are interesting are the ones that actually are written from scratch that are not derived from other uh, distributions. And we'll talk more about some of those as well in this series. Um, anyway, it's very important to get to know your Linux distribution or what you're going to be working with. Another great way is to go directly to the web page of that distro, click the features, uh, learn more about uh, you know who the team is, understand you know who the developers are. Um, this is just a really great way to get familiar with it and to see what you're going to be working with. Now, if you're more of a hobbyist and you're interested in alternative operating systems, things that are not Linux, uh, there's a website called the OS Dev Wiki. Uh, it's wiki.osdev.org. Uh, and it's a great place to go learn about hobbyist operating systems. I like to experiment with other ones. One in particular that I've found very interesting is one called Ghost. Uh, it's down here, Ghost OS. You can click it and learn a bit more about it. Uh, and it takes you to ghostkernel.org, which is a, a very interesting project that someone's been working on. Uh, but I find the OS, De OS Dev Wiki a great place to learn about different operating systems that are not Linux. And this is important for several reasons. Uh, if you're using uh, like an embedded board, for example, and you're looking for an operating system that's different, um, this is actually a BeagleBone, uh, and this is a Raspberry Pi. Now, while Linux distributions are available for these ARM-based processors, um, there are some alternative systems like RiskOS, or Risk Open, I believe it's called, uh, that's actually pretty cool to use. It's not Linux, it's actually a very 
uh, old operating system that was made for Acorn computers uh, in Britain. Uh, but it, it's it's a really cool operating system and something worth worth trying if you're looking for something different. So definitely check out wiki.osdev.org. So another consideration factor when selecting an operating system is what is your use case and what is your target? So if you're targeting like a server or a cloud instance or something like that, uh, it will also depend on what your application workload is going to be. Uh, so that's another thing you should really need to be thinking about prior to making your selection. Um, another thing is when it comes to you know, SBCs or single board computers, um, you know, these are small, they're designed to have a minimal amount of storage, the processing power is usually less than that of a, of a large server or a modern desktop computer, although they are very powerful, um, they are indeed less capable. So that's something to consider also is what are the specs of, of the machine? Uh, another thing is, are you going to be using, uh, like as th an example here, this is a, this is a phone, uh, this is a Pine 64 phone, um, you know, again, a, a Beagle board, this is a, uh, a thin computer, it's not a thin client, thin clients are different, but this is a, a thin, uh, you know, Intel based machine, uh, you know, you've got desktops, laptops, you know, um, there's all kinds of different use cases, so that's another thing to take into consideration prior to making your selection. Another thing too, do you want a commercially supported operating system or are you okay doing self-support? If you want to pay for it, then an option like uh, you know, Red Hat or SUSE, um, I think even Canonical offers support for Ubuntu. These are options for you to consider also if having a phone number to call is important for your use case. Um, beyond those, you know, really uh, there's a ton of different choices out there for you to choose from and matching the requirements uh, to your uh, use case and your device is going to be an incredi a critical step in the decision making process. Another consideration is how do you plan to use your device? Is this going to be a dedicated machine? As an example, if you have a 3D printer and you wanted to use it for you know, sending print jobs to it or monitoring the print jobs of a 3D printer? Or uh, do you want this thing to be you know, a, a box that lives underneath your router and basically filters traffic? Um, you know, what do you want this thing to do? Is it gonna be a weather station? Is it gonna be a gaming machine? Are you gonna use it to run retro games? I've got a setup in the other room that does uh, you know, all my Atari 2600, NES, Sega, Master System and all that runs really great and I'm running it full time primarily for that. Uh, do you want to be able to multitask? Is this going to be a daily computer that you're going to do other things on? What's the purpose of this machine? And so that will also depend on which distribution you select. Are you going to select a distribution that's custom towards doing that particular thing? Or are you going to pick a more generic desktop and then custom tune it yourself with different applications? There's a lot of flexibility when it comes to Linux systems. Another thing is, well, what about BSD? What if that's interesting to you? Do you want to check out FreeBSD? What if you're building a firewall? OpenBSD is a really compelling firewall. The PF or packet filter built into the BSD kernel is really awesome. And it's probably one of the best firewalls and easiest to use ones out there. Uh, so, you know, that's another thing to think about too is, well, are there other systems that are perhaps better or provide better functionality than, than another one, depending on what you're trying to do. So really get a grip on your use case, understand how you want to use your machine, and then choose accordingly. Another important aspect of selecting your distribution is the CPU architecture. Now earlier I've already mentioned there is ARM processors and Intel processors, but there's even more nuances than just that. So as an example, this is a MIPS-based processor. This is called a Creator CI20 dev board, and it uses a MIPS processor, which is very different than some of the other chips that are out there. It's not as widely common uh, as, it, as it used to be, but if you remember Silicon Graphics or SGI, their architecture was based on MIPS. Uh, MIPS has continued to be developed. There's a lot of set-top boxes and other devices out there that use MIPS. Chances are you don't even know you're using it uh, in your daily life, but there's a lot of MIPS processors out there. Uh, these boards are extremely rare. You probably won't come across too many of these. However, in the ARM world, or you know, ARM is a type of processor that's been around also for an extremely long time, there's differences there. So as an example, this Raspberry Pi, uses a Broadcom-based ARM chip, and this uh, BeagleBone is, uses a Texas Instruments ARM chip, and this phone, this is actually an ARM-based 
phone that runs Linux, this also has a different processor, and this is based on the Pine 64 uh, SBC. And so there's differences even within these individual chips. And so as you look for distributions, just because something works on a Raspberry Pi doesn't mean it's going to work on a BeagleBone out of the box. So that's another thing you need to be careful and definitely look at the supportability of that OS. So these are some things that you should think about when selecting a Linux distribution. In the next episode of this series, I'm going to use a tool called Ventoy, and I'll talk more about that in the next episode. But what this does essentially is allow you to test a variety of operating systems without having to keep reflashing this. So normally you download your image file, you put it into your computer, you use a tool like Etcher, you burn the image onto the USB, and then you boot the system uh, from USB. And again, that's of course for physical machines. If you're doing a Raspberry Pi or an embedded device, you might actually be writing files manually to an SD card and inserting that SD card into your device. Or if you're working in a virtual machine environment like VMware Workstation or VirtualBox or another system like Virt Manager, perhaps you're just you know, attaching those ISO images directly to the virtual machine and performing the test that way. So there's a variety of ways that we could go about testing and trying these things out. I'm gonna go ahead and use this actual uh, physical piece of hardware. This is a, a Lenovo uh, Think Center. It's a Core i5 machine. It's a, I think it's a ninth generation Core i5, so it's relatively recent. Uh, and I'll use this Ventoy USB stick, which has a whole bunch of ISOs loaded on it. So the advantage of Ventoy is not having to continuously reflash this. I can just drop additional images or ISO files onto this USB stick and it provides me a boot menu to start these up. So this is the tool I'll be using. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already uh, and stay tuned for this series. If you have any questions, comments, or a specific distribution that you think I should test, I'd love to hear about that and put it down below in the comments. We'll see you next time on Retro Access.